Who are you on that train of empire and trade? You are a trainer, whose roots are the rails of locomotive dreams. The dreams of loco, motion, of moving from the place, to yet another place, and to another place besides. It's a kind of crazed motion, a valuing of the movement over the moved. You are a trainer, on board with the rest of us, on board with the steel, wheat, and corn, the hogs and the handbags, the e-books and iPhones, the zloty, pounds, and yen. If it can be ticketed, it can be trained. Where are you going? If you're training, then it doesn't matter. The locomotive itself determines your locale. You're meant to admire the passing landscapes, chit-chatting with fellow passengers, to break bread with them at scheduled meal times. But are they true companions? The word itself tells of those with whom your bread is shared. Where is the companionship aboard that train? We've lost it, it seems, through a prioritization of transport, trafficking, and trade. We've become a polity of passengers, a community of commerce. Closer community means a place, means a people, one that extends beyond the commodification of the railway station, a jailway nation, beyond the onboard entertainment, beyond the duty-free. We can get off. That doesn't mean the banning of locomotion itself, just the banishing of that locomotive lord, that goddess of consumption whispering incessantly in our ears. Eusylvanus calls us to a community, in a space beyond the marketplace, in a forest of family and friends. Good fences make good forests, a defense against traffickers and traders that want to entrain you, to entice you to the train. Do we break bread under the forested dome of family and fellowship? Let's hope so. Otherwise, we're breaking bread products under a metal car dome with flickering lights. Our prepackaged fare served quietly and individually, both to us and adjacent customers. A crowded clientele on a never-rolling train. <laughs>